Well, Donald Trump's advisor is defending him today about his taxes, or precisely the claims that he may not have paid federal income taxes for up to two decades. You know, the New York Times published reports that show Mr. Trump's 1995 taxes. Those revelations show a loss of $916 million that year. And under federal law, though, it was perfectly legal for Mr. Trump to carry forward those losses over a period that could be as long as 20 years. And that could mean he paid no federal taxes as the tax code would allow. His advisors, advisors claim if Mr. Trump can abide by the regulations of the U.S. tax system, he is the one to fix it. Politically, he has said that he's going to change these laws and that there's no one who's better suited to change these laws than someone like him who's been subjected so, to audit by the IRS so, so just to, year after year after year. So, will he do away with things like this? He probably is better positioned than anyone to figure out how to do away with it because he understands the tax code better than anyone else. I'd rather have a genius who understands the tax right. code that wants to reform it. Well, if this is the case, Mr. Trump would be the first presidential nominee since the federal income tax code was imposed in 1913 to apparently not pay any taxes. David Hawking, senior editor of Roll Call, joins us now with what all this means. I mean, David, what do you think the impact of these revelations will be? Well, you know, often I come on here thinking the impact is going to be that Donald Trump is going to be in a world of hurt politically, and every single time I've said that, I've been proved wrong. So I'm uh, very reluctant to say so again. Uh, you, one would think in a normal political year under the normal laws of political dynamics that a candidate who is trying to appeal to the little guy, appeal to the guy who pays his or her fair share of taxes and is struggling and doesn't think the government is spending their money wisely, would look askance at a nominee who for, truly for legal reasons got away without paying uh, any tax at all, maybe for years and years. But this is, of course, not a regular year. Uh, this is, Trump has defied political logic several other times this week with Alicia Machado, with his middle of the night tweet, twittering. Uh, maybe this is, there's an explanation here. Maybe he was up in the middle of the night because he knew this New York Times story was coming. So I don't know. I would think that, you know, I, I would normally think that Mr. Giuliani and Mr. Christie are out on a limb here. But they may get away with selling this line. Well, you know, Mr. Giuliani was a U.S. attorney here in New York starting in 1984, and he prosecuted tax cheats, so he certainly knows the tax law. And both of them say Trump had a fiduciary responsibility to his company. But USA Today, tonight, is pointing out that these were not business taxes. Uh, these were his personal taxes. And certainly Mrs. Clinton's been using it and will continue to do so. Let me show you the clip from the debate the other night. All of you watching tonight to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid... Oh, you just heard him say, that makes me smart. Now, that may make him smart in a business world, but, you know, he's dealing with, with the political arena now, David. A absolutely. Now, this is all happening, you know, in the middle of the 1990s, this... This almost a billion dollar loss that he reported in 1995 was, of course, two decades before he thought about running for president or actually didn't run for president. So had he been a normal politician, he may have approached his taxes differently. He did not have a fiduciary responsibility to his family, however, to, re to try and uh, tackle the tax code as aggressively as possible. None of us have an obligation to our families to do that. We can, we can pay taxes and take deductions as we want. Um, I, I would like to say that, that Christie and Giuliani, their, their notion that he is uniquely qualified to fix this sort of brought to mind uh, the analogy of the fox in the hen house. If you, the farm, this is what they're saying here is that this is a very unorthodox argument, that, that the farmer should go out and find uh, the wiliest fox on his entire farm uh -huh. and hire that well, fox to come in and design the new hen house. Well, it's, a, it's a very unorthodox argument. Uh, or finally, you know, he, he apparently has done this before. There were reports that two years in the 1990s he didn't pay. And here's a political article from four months ago that laid it out from the 1970s. Uh, they say Trump paid zero income taxes for two years in 1978 and 1979 when he turned over his tax returns to apply for a casino license in New Jersey. It's notable that a man living on 450000 a month, Trump also had a massive yacht and aircraft at the time, could avoid paying income taxes. And he's criticized this stuff. He said that the people who pay taxes, the, the fat cats, and get away with it, he has said it's ridiculous and that they're getting away with murder. So how does he explain that? 
uh, with a straight face, like he explains so many other apparent contradictions in his own uh, record. I, to, to, to take it to the next level, it, it would be, you said he would be the first uh, president since the institution of the income tax uh, to not pay any taxes. He would also be presumably the first um, on paper billionaire who would be in charge of simplifying the tax code under almost any tax code simplification. Somebody with his complicated tax returns, he would end up own, owing more. Um, a little bit difficult to see, given how sort of self interested Mr. Trump has been in preserving his business empire, how he would be a president who would simplify the tax code, who would urge Congress to simplify the tax code in a way that would do him potentially millions of dollars in harm. Yeah, we'll see what happens. One, uh, the debate one week from tonight, certainly this will come up, and certainly his proposals for simplifying the tax code will probably front and center one week from this evening. Absolutely. David Hawkins, <laughs> always great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.